And welcome to the Cape Elizabeth School Department um, School Board meeting, Tuesday, March 11th, 2003. And we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll start with adjustments to the agenda. Um, we have one adjustment to add under uh, new business um, an expulsion of a student. Uh, we'll move on to the approval of the February school board meetings. Does anyone have anything to adjust to those mi minutes? No. Sorry, um, that's my mistake. It should be the March meeting. I'm sorry. It should be the March, March meeting. It's my oh, stick I'm sorry. On the agenda. Okay. Sorry. Um, and we'll move on to our comments from our high school and middle school students. We'll start with the high school. We have quite a crowd here today. Oh. <laughs> We're just going to talk about what the high school's been doing a little bit and uh, discuss why all those people are here. Um, well, Bob Marley came to support the sophomore class. It was a fundraiser. He got home and he came to the high school and told some jokes. It was pretty funny. Um, the state math meet was today. Um, select few individuals who tried out based on the scores from previous math meets were selected to go to the state math meet at the Civic Center. So that was pretty exciting. Um, fourth quarter began just last week, so school's almost over. And uh, <laughs> especially for seniors, as you know, we have a senior transition project for three weeks in May. It gives us an opportunity to you know, go into the community, get a taste of the real world. Um, we're looking forward to that, I can assure you. Also, a uh, banded course had some concerts. That went pretty well. Um, we, had a, we had a banquet at the high school in the assembly room um, for the winter teams and, uh, and the jazz band. And the jazz band played some tunes for us. That was pretty exciting, and they uh, recognized State champions, the girls' swim team, hockey team, for the success, and uh, everybody else. So that was pretty good. Good way to honor with their athletes through the whole school. Uh, sometimes they don't get recognized as much. Also, uh, students are fundraising to uh, give Kendall a new kidney. Uh, Kendall is a Cape Cod of 1991, I believe. Um, she needs a kidney transplant, so we're going to help pay for the operation. It's a little less than $100,000. Uh, so students are asked to bring uh, one dollar to the English class during school um, to help pay for her. So I think it's pretty nice for students. And also, uh, one act play *Metamorphoses* went really well, and uh, I think they won some awards. It was excellent. Um, now, as everybody knows, we've uh, had some trouble with the basketball team. Um, the team did really well this year, and they made it to the semifinals or quarterfinals. <clears throat> and they a great team. Um, they had a great coach as well, and uh, some of the success we attribute to the coach. Um, many students have come up to me to express their concerns about losing Mr. Ray as the basketball coach next year, or, or they don't exactly know what's going to happen, but there's been rumors and the media, of course, press covered this, so uh, many students are confused about what's going to happen next year. Um, and every student who's come up to me is concerned that they feel Mr. Ray is not given a fair chance to be coach, and they're in complete support of Mr. Ray because they know him well, and they've they've been part of the team, or they have him for Woods or Tech, like I do. Um, for example, let me take myself for example. I've had him for four years as a Woods teacher, and I know he's not going to be losing his teaching job, thank goodness, and hopefully not his basketball one either. But um, it's all connected with Mr. Ray. You know, everything, everything. The basketball helps him teach Woods, and the Woods helps him be a better basketball coach. So. It's uh, kind of uh, affecting, you know, how he's gonna, how he is in the classroom. So that's the perspective the students have come to me with. Um, so we're kind of concerned and kind of upset about what's going on now. Um, every student has approached me. Also, the basketball team has asked me to share this with you. It's a petition that has 23 out of 30 kids on the freshman, varsity, and JV basketball teams. I signed this petition in support of Mr. Ray. 
which I think that says a lot if uh, more than two-thirds of the team assigned this, 23 out of 30. Um, I'll just read you the beginning so people know what they're saying. <laughs> it says, Petition. We, the undersigned, are in support of Mr. A and wish for him to continue coaching basketball next year. And then 23 kids. Some of the seniors on the basketball team came up with this idea and they went around school and asking students, and would ask students to uh, share their thoughts and sign the petition if they're in support of Mr. Ray coaching next year. And uh, as you know, this website that has, uh, you can post your comments <coughs> about Mr. Ray, what you think about the situation. Um, and as the media said, and uh, I view the website, almost everybody on that website is in support of Mr. Ray, and they're kind of appalled to see what's happening. And most people are just, wanting answers. So that's a uh, perspective from the high school. Any Thank questions you. about the petition or anything else? Any questions or comments from high school? No. Let me see. No, we want it. We want the petition. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we will move on to the middle school. Good evening, I'm Elise Wendy Roberts. And I'm Elise Maloney. Um, the play was very popular with the fifth graders this year, and many of them took part in it, and it was a great way for them to um, be involved in the school. Um, for sixth grade, Chiwonki, um, they're preparing for Chiwonki, which will be the week of May 12th through 16th. Not much has been happening um, in the seventh grade. They're collecting course selection sheets for next year and they're studying physical science and building electric houses to better prepare them for high school. We're having a tropical dance this Friday for seventh and eighth graders, and our vacation is the week of the 20th. Um, for sports, indoor track championships were two Fridays ago at the Portland Expo. Um, even though for the championships they don't keep score, there were a lot of personal bests and breaking of school records. The girls team did go undefeated throughout the whole season, and the boys always finished <coughs> in the top. Uh, the spring start sports will be starting within the next week. Um, baseball, softball, and lacrosse are open for 7th and 8th graders, and track is offered for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Um, a middle school musical was a great hit, and um, we had our last performance yesterday for the school. We had four other performances. And on this Friday, one of the 8th grade jazz bands will be um, performing this Friday at the Cabaret Night at the high school, which is a jazz festival and the other eighth grade jazz band will be performing on Sunday. Any questions? Yes? Is there much conversation in the middle school about the uh, shutting down of the D.A.R.E. program amongst the students? Um, yeah, I know that I've read a couple articles but about the fifth grade teachers um, talking about the D.A.R.E. program, but not a lot has been going on about the students quite yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and now we'll move on to communications. Um, I'm sorry. Yes. I'd like to inform the board and the Cape Elizabeth School community of the resignation of Cal Chaplin, director of Portland Arts and Technical High School as a result of health issues. Um, Cal has always been a supporter of our challenge students as well as our students who are in need of other methods of education and that school provides it and she has done a consistently great job in that area and we will miss her desperately. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, it, it's really unusual to see this many people at one of our school board meetings. Um, I know that everyone is feeling um, very passionate about the Coach Ray issue. Um, and when this town feels strongly about an issue in, our, in the schools, um, they're certainly not, not shy about making their feelings known. Um, I want to start off by thanking everybody for your interest, your concern, your comments, and certainly all of your emails regarding Coach Ray. Um, we as a school board recognize that there's a great deal of public interest in 
and concern regarding the non-renewal of Coach Ray's yearly contract. Passions are running very high on both sides of this issue. To be fair to Coach Ray, as well as our school administration, the board realizes it must review this matter in detail to evaluate all of the facts. Right now, we are sitting here before you not having any information in this matter. <clears throat> to make a fair, not having any of the facts in this matter. To make a fair evaluation, we need a process that will allow everyone involved to come forth and state his or her view. What the board now needs time for is to conduct a fair and thorough investigation. There were two people who did follow the process and notify the superintendent of their desire to make a general public comment this evening and we will, re on, we will honor those two requests to speak. While we understand and agree that it's very important that everyone interested in this matter have an opportunity to be heard, we must do this in the appropriate forum. Tonight is a school board business meeting and this is not something that is on our agenda. Therefore, we will schedule a meeting where each of you will have the opportunity to express and provide input to the school board. Once that date has been determined, it will be announced publicly. Everyone needs to calm down and know that the school board will approach this matter with a very open mind. We will listen to the facts from the appropriate people involved and deal with this matter in a fair and honest way. Um, the, I would like to call the uh, two people, um, Grady Stevens, to the podium. Thank you. My name is Grady Stevens. Uh, if I understood you correctly, essentially two people, I, I know I was one of them, asked for the, to be placed on the agenda tonight for public comment. I, I understood from, from uh, Tom that the public comment period is about a half an hour. I obviously do not intend at all uh, to monopolize that. I did have several people that asked me to speak on their behalf. So I, I would like to make some comments. I, I assure you I'll take less than half the time, uh, if that's okay. You are free to make your comments. Okay. Uh, like I said, my name is Graydon Stevens, and I had three children. My children are all gone from the Cape Elizabeth school system now. I have two daughters, uh, one who graduated in 95 and one who graduated in 97, and a son, Grady, who graduated in 2001. All three of them played for Mr. Ray. Uh, and so I guess uh, one of the questions might be is, is, I really don't have any direct stake in this issue anymore. Uh, and I don't want, I understand the appeal process is going to take place, and I in no way intend to encroach upon that tonight. Uh, what I wanted to do, though, what I thought was important to do was to try to explain to the board uh, both the breadth and the depth of the feeling of support in, in, in favor of Mr. Ray, uh, what I believe is the overwhelming majority in favor, so you'd have that as a perspective as you proceed down this matter. And the question that might come to your mind right away is, well, why do I care? I mean, I don't have three children there anymore. I did, but they're no longer there. And I guess the reason I care, uh, that I can't emphasize enough, is because of my children, is that uh, I don't think that it's really too strong. It's, it's probably, I, I struggle for the word that I would use to describe how they feel about Mr. Ray. And I honestly don't believe it's too strong to say that my kids adore Mr. Ray. Uh, they, uh, they regard him with the absolute highest respect. And the reason they do that really has little to do with basketball. I mean, they were decent ball players, but they weren't great athletes. Uh, it has more to do with Mr. Ray as a person, what he absolutely demanded of them and how he treated them as people. Uh, and they respect that, and I think any kid will respect that. I think that's what we want out of that kid, is that any kid uh, will recognize and appreciate those principles and those character characteristics in a person if you just let them, if we just let them do that. So when I, was, when I found out, the one of the first things I did that was going on is I emailed my daughters and Grady 
and said, geez, did you hear the news? And immediately got back pretty much stunned emails saying they absolutely could not believe the news and what can you do? Is there anything you can do to help out Mr. Ray? And so I guess what I, what I wanted to do is to gather together some people and say, well, let's just send out some emails and let's see, you know, what people think about this. And so I sort of became by default the central repository for a lot of the emails and, and collecting names. And we put together a statement and asked people, I sent it out by email and handed it around and said, would people like to sign this uh, in, in, in showing their support for Mr. Ray? And we did get a lot of signatures. It's going to be published in the Cape Courier the next time around. More signatures are coming. I think there's going to be many, many more. As of right now, I've got 238 signatures. I would like to read the statement. It was, it was you know, sort of a draft statement, an, an open letter to Superintendent Fasella, Principal Shedd, and members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board. We wish to public, publicly acknowledge our appreciation for the extraordinary contributions Jim Ray made to the Cape Elizabeth youth and high school basketball programs during the last 12 years, and to express our great dismay and regret that he has not been retained as the varsity boys basketball coach. Under the supervision of Coach Ray, the very successful Saturday morning basketball program has provided young boys in our community the opportunity to learn the fundamentals of organized basketball, as well as the value of teamwork and fair play. Under his guidance, the varsity teams have consistently performed at a level of unparalleled success. More importantly, the success of Coach Ray's programs has been founded on his own high personal standards of fairness and honesty, discipline and integrity, and his uncompromising commitment to excellence. Jim Ray is an excellent coach. He is greatly admired by his players, highly respected by his colleagues, and much appreciated by parents and the general public. To say the least, his termination is bewildering. He deserves better, and his players in the community deserve a thorough explanation. Uh, what I've, I've done is, like I said, I've collected these signatures that we have thus far. I do have enough of these that I could, uh, if the board wishes, I could give them to the board. <laughs> now, that was the open letter of support which I've read, and, and I've, I've got to say, uh, 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 Madam Chairperson, is I received a copy of your email, and I, I appreciate the, the stance you've taken tonight. I received a copy of your email dated April 5th to the Cape community, uh, and there, there was one sentence in there, though, that I did want to comment on tonight with all due respect, and, and that sentence was the, was the statement that public opinion and public sentiment, while we acknowledge receiving it, will have no direct bearing on the outcome of this investigation. I think I, I, think I understand it. You can interpret that two ways, really. And uh, if, if what was meant to be conveyed by that is that this board will do a thorough investigation and we will, neither be, we will be neither swayed nor ruled by mob mentality, I can assure you I absolutely agree with that sentiment. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the proper way to approach things. However, if by that was meant to convey that regardless of what the overwhelming majority of the Cape community, both student and athletes that have played in the past, those that are presently playing for them and, the, and, and hope to play for them in the future, and their parents believe for the right reasons that Mr. Ray is the right person to coach their children, then I think that would be wrong because I think you must absolutely listen to the overwhelming majority because what you have to ask yourself is if that many people believe that deeply in, this, in, in Mr. Ray, then there must be a reason for that. And, and you've got to listen to the evidence and listen to everything that you're going to hear in the appeal process uh, with that perspective in mind. Now, given that, uh, I think if you look at the signatures, I, I would urge you all, when you have the time, uh, to, to really read the petition and read the, read the people have, that have signed that, because I think, I think you're going to be surprised. Uh, it's not just the number of people have, that have signed it, and I can assure you that there's going to be many, many more signatures before we're done. It's not just the number, but it's also the, the, the names of some of those people I think will very much surprise you as well. I mean, there are people in there uh, that don't, like, like I do, have no direct stake in this anymore. Uh, they've had children that are long gone from the school system, and they still feel, feel very, very strongly about the issue. And you ask yourself, why do they feel so strongly? I guarantee you it's because they've spoken to their kids and they've gotten the same feedback from their kids as I received from mine. <laughs> now, I mean, they're not rabble-rousers. Uh, they're not activists for the most part. I know I'm certainly not an activist. I've never done anything like this before. And I mean, maybe, maybe I, that's something to be ashamed of. Maybe I should have been more involved, but I'm just not one of those type of people. You know, we, they're not the type of people that sign every petition that's shoved under their nose. They are supporting Mr. Ray for a, for a very, very serious reason. Now. 
when you get to those reasons, you say, I, I thought about maybe I should try to put together something in my own words stating, well, what are the reasons why the uh, support for Mr. Ray is so passionate and, and, and so broad? I mean, it's both broad and deep. But rather than that, I think it is more appropriately comes from some of the student athletes who've had it in the past. And like I said, I've been the one that's been collecting emails. And so what I did was I've got many, many emails. The sentiment in those emails from past players from all over the country is unanimous. And what I did was I picked out three that I'd like to read to you tonight, and then basically I'm done and I'll sit down. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you how I picked out those three for, uh, for one, a couple of reasons, really. One of the reasons is they said it very, very well, uh, what they felt. And, and I think it was important. And you've got to understand the comments that I've had. I'd be more than willing to share every single email I've received, almost to a almost to an every single one, it's not Mr. Ray as a technical basketball coach. It's Mr. Ray as a person, what he's taught us, and how he treated us. Uh, and so, you know, it, it's what they say. They say it very well. Plus, secondly, uh, these three particular emails I picked out because I think if you took a poll up at the high school of, of the teachers and the administrators in the high school and asked them, who are some of the finer student athletes, both as athletes themselves and as just members of the Cape High School community that you can recall that have graduated from this high school in the last three years. And I think the three young men that I picked out for the emails I'm going to read to you tonight would be included at or near the top of every single person's list if, if you took such a poll. And so I'd like to read those emails if you, if you don't mind. <laughs> the first one says, Dear Mr. Stevens, my name is Kyle Pond. My sister Erin, a friend of Shana's, forwarded me the information about Coach Ray's departure. He was my coach for two years back in the mid-1990s. I love and respect the man and fully support any letter you send or any efforts on his behalf. Please let me know if there is anything I can do to help. My family owes very much to the man. I don't know much about his dismissal, but I know that he has helped mold strong men and women for over a decade. Again, please let me know if there's anything I can do. Sincerely, Kyle Pond, MD, University of Washington Medical Center, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> the next one says, Dear Mr. Stevens, I saw the letter you wrote regarding the decision of Cape Elizabeth's superintendent not to rehire Jim Ray as boys basketball coach next year. It is a well-written letter, and I believe it sends a strong message to have the names of former Cape students and athletes accompany the inquiry. Please add my name to this list. Additionally, please let me know if there is anything else that could be done on Mr. Ray's behalf. Although I played under Coach Ray for only a short period of time, he made a great impact on me as athlete and more importantly as a person. If there was one regret that I have, it was not taking full advantage of the opportunity to have him as a coach and teacher. Thank you. Jeff Haywood, Olive Hill Development, LLC, Menlo Park, California. And then finally, this one. Uh, I assure you this is the last one I'll read, and then I'll make a brief comment and sit down. But this one's a little bit longer, but uh, I, I chose this one as well because I, I really, truly believe that no matter how hard anybody tried, no matter how long anybody worked, one could not possibly improve on this statement as a statement for why Mr. Ray ought to be retained as a basketball coach. Mr. Stevens, I am writing to you regarding the April 2, 2003 Portland Press Herald article, Cape Elizabeth Won't Rehire Boys Hoops Coach, written by Selena Ricks, that was forwarded along to some of us from Chris Sarbeck and Aaron Pond. Let me first start by saying that there is so much to say. However, I would prefer to approach the matter from an angle having little to do with basketball. Mr. Ray's commitment to the game, knowledge of the game, and his ability to teach the game to boys and girls of all ages should not be in question. What should be noted, and I speak for many past and present bodies, is that Jim Ray develops leadership, motivation, and a work ethic in children and young adults that is unrivaled. Personally and quite simply, Mr. Ray is a role model for me in life and one of the best coaches, teachers that I have ever had. Outside of my family, who always guided me to do what I did on and off the athletic field, there was only one person who ever motivated me to be a better person, leader, and athlete. It was Mr. Jim Ray. I played soccer, basketball, and baseball at Cape Elizabeth High School, 1989 to 1993, with a group of student athletes that won various conference and state titles. Most titles came from the soccer fields and baseball diamonds, amongst other sporting arenas for Cape Elizabeth student athletes. My strengths as an athlete were not in sport of basketball. Had it not been for Mr. Ray, I may have chosen to give up the sport in an earlier stage. Perhaps my greatest memory from high school sport was winning a Western Maine conference title for Coach Ray. 
This title was the product of a 1-5 wins versus losses team in its first six games in the sport of baseball. Yes, baseball. After starting 1-5, Mr. Ray sat down with the team and spent one entire practice addressing all issues with no bats, balls, or gloves. He made us focus. He made us goal-oriented as a group and not individuals. After suffering only one more regular season loss, we did not lose again until the state championship game. He committed himself as a coach for one year in a sport that he played more than taught and motivated a group of collectively average athletes to dedicating themselves to being the best team they could be. His efforts were brilliant, his sincerity with us unforgettable, and the result was near perfection. It was a time I will never forget. At 27 years of age now, I have played under high school, collegiate, and professionally recognized coaches. In the past six years, I have coached in an organization, FC Greater Boston Bolts, with collegiate head coaches from Harvard University, Boston College, Northeastern University, Providence College, and Clark University. Part of the nature of sports and aging is that coaches will come and go. Coaches will hold in high regard the conference, state, or national titles they have guided teams to. However, the pride, honor, and reward in teaching and coaching is found when 10, 20, or 30 years later, a student who you have taught or a player you have coached can walk up to you and thank you for what you did for him or her. It is now 10 years since I have left the walls of Cape Elizabeth. I have visited Mr. Ray when I can to say hello and ask how his family is. What I should say to him every time I see him, however, is thank you. Thank you for being a model person in my youth that has taken part in making me who I am today. Thank you for being such an outstanding person. Jim Ray motivated me to play a sport, but more importantly, he motivated me to be a leader and hardworking individual. He developed a work ethic instilled in me that I could still carry out as a professional, an athlete, and a coach of youth soccer in Massachusetts. And I can say with confidence that Mr. Ray has had similar impact on many others that have crossed his path. They should all thank him, too, for being such an outstanding person who truly cared about his players and students. As a coach in general, you model yourself after those you have played for or coached under. My father was a great athlete and coach I, who I learned from but never played for. I played for Mr. Ray and learned from him on and off the courts and fields. It is my hope now that my interaction with coaching children and young adults will match what he has done for me. That someday, sometime down the road, an individual can say to me, you made me a better person. Mr. Ray is a highly respected player, teacher, and coach of the game. Again, this is not, should not be disputed. Just ask anyone in the state of Maine. In parting, however, I would ask one question. Why would the town officials ever consider not rehiring a person who teaches attributes that are larger than sport? Those that can be carried outside the walls of a gymnasium. Those that make you persevere in life. I am forever grateful for what he has done for me. Mr. Stevens, I hope everything is well with you and your family. Please feel free to express any of my thoughts to those involved in this decision-making process regarding Mr. Ray's future with the Cape Elizabeth basketball program. I would be more than happy to come to Maine to make my case clear. Again, there is so much to say. I just, people see how much of an important role model he truly is. Sincerely, Nick Riccio, Accounting Manager, Orange Services, U.S., Cambridge, Massachusetts. I will, I'd, I'd like to finish it up with one, one brief comment, if I may. Uh, there was a reference earlier from a student from the high school about this MBR uh, basketball, uh, whatever it is. Uh, I've got to admit, I mean, I love basketball. I've always been a basketball nut. I didn't really even know that place existed or that site existed until this week uh, when I was told that there were a bunch of you know, hits on it or whatever they do. I checked it out and, uh, you know, and looked at the message board a little bit, and I don't really... I'm not a real big fan of the message board type of communications, to tell you the truth, because I, I believe that sometimes it provides a rather unfortunate forum for people who really don't have the courage or the convictions. But nevertheless, there was one on there that, that, uh, that I did pick up that actually my son emailed to me. And what it did was it paraphrased a quote, and I'll paraphrase it too. It, it actually stated a famous quote from another era, and you may recognize it, but I'll paraphrase it. And, and what it says, really, in paraphrase is bad things happen when good people don't speak out. Uh, and I guess what I want to leave you with is that there are an awful lot of good people that have already spoken out by signing that petition that are going to sign, and a lot more names are going to sign it. There's an awful lot of good people who want to speak out, 
on behalf of a very fine man who has left nothing but an indelible and positive imp Im implantation on their children and influence on their children. And I hope that you listen to those people. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Now we will call Tom Tinson. My name is Tom Tinsman. I live at uh, 52 Columbus Road in Cape Elizabeth. Um, I used to play basketball against Graydon, and I'm up here to prove that I'm still quicker than him. I'll be done much quicker than he was. Um, I too had three children play basketball at Cape, and I was fortunate to grow up here and raise my family here. And all three of my boys played for Jim Ray at one time. Um, I'm not up here to assassinate any characters. I think there's enough of that that's been done in the past. Um, and I'm not up here as part of any organized effort because I'm not sure there is any organized effort going on in this town to not back Jim Ray. I've come out publicly on the MBR uh, forum that Graydon talked about, and I signed my name to the issue because too many people are going in there anonymous, anonymously and not sharing their true uh, name or feelings. There's been a lot of name calling, there's been a lot of uh, very negative things said about a lot of people involved in this process. I've been involved in a number of processes outside of basketball and sports in the school where many times these arguments come to head and you have opposing parties who feel like they're doing the right thing. You know, in their own mind, they really have an issue that they feel very strongly about and they want to come forth with their, with their opinions. What I've gathered so far is that many people don't have the right facts. I don't have all the facts. I don't think anybody here in the public has all the facts. Jim Ray knows what's going on, and you, the school board, the principal, and the superintendent know what's going on. I'm here to support the school board and the superintendent and our principal who have gone through a process, as much as some people don't like it, and made their recommendations. Now, what's in these recommendations, I'm hoping, as a citizen of this town, that we find out what is in this report. I have my own feelings, and under another agenda some other night, when other people are allowed to express their opinions, I will express mine. Um, if there is going to be an organized effort on both sides, I may get involved on one side or the other. I have already come out publicly and put my name to a letter that says my hope is that Jim Ray can come before this board, admit his mistakes, apologize to the people who have been hurt, and take the recommendations that were given to him by his boss and go on and serve this community. I have felt since the very first day Jim Ray took over the basketball program that he had the ability and the knowledge to become an excellent, excellent coach. I have waited every year hoping that each year would pass, that he would in some way improve upon the things that he is not good at. And I think for anybody to stand up here and say that Jim Ray um, is an excellent coach and is good at all facets of the game, is missing some of the facts. He has some attributes which are not conducive to good learning. Um, I hope that at some point he learns those attributes, either through other coaches that I see here tonight who have demonstrated these attributes and can become the best that he can be. Um, I'm a fan of Cape basketball. I've been to hundreds of games over the years. I played at Cape, um, my kids played at Cape, I'm a Cape fan, and yet in the years that Jim has become the coach of the varsity system, I have been left as an outsider to the program. I can't even enjoy the program all that much, other than going to the games and, and, and watching. I've 
volunteered to help several times. But over the years, I've been treated with total disrespect. And I know many, many other people that have been in the same boat that I'm in. So I'll leave it at that. I'm not here to assassinate his character. I think he offers many, many good things to the program. But I think there's some things in his makeup that keeps him from becoming the complete coach that he could be. So my hope as a citizen of this community and a fan and a parent that the facts can come out so that we all know what some of the recommendations were that were meant for Jim and why he didn't do those. And only he knows why he chose not to do these things. But I've got to say, after watching, you know, and a lot of the letters that came in from former students and players, um, you know, it, it's just one of those things where we, we need to know where he stands on these issues. And, um, and, and with Nick Riccio's letter, I'd like to commend his English teacher, too. It was a great letter. Um, it's all I really have to say. I'm not part of any organized effort, but I just felt that um, I needed to say something as somebody that knows the situation has been around long before the situation even developed, but I'm here to support the school board, the superintendent, and the principal. And Jim Ray, if he comes around and, and will uh, not be an insubordinate to the, the, uh, the recommendations and, and uh, things put before him. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's, there's no more. No. Oh. Okay. Um, I, I would like to reiterate that we will have um, a forum, a, an appropriate forum, um, for the 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 appeal to be made to the school board, and and I would like to say again that tonight, sitting here, the school board does not have all of the facts in this matter. Um, we are not privy to personnel issues. Um, and in this case now, it has come to us. And, and normally, ordinarily, um, the board doesn't get involved in these matters. But we are now. And I would like to assure all of you um, that we will conduct a fair and an honest investigation into this matter. And you will all be advised of when that meeting date is set. Um, are there any other comments from the board? Okay, then I would like to move on to, I would like to move on in our meeting. Okay. We will take a, re a recess for five minutes. I want to thank you for refraining. to the superintendent's report. Tom? A few items uh, to share. One, uh, we do have notification of a few teacher resignations for a variety of reasons. Uh, Lydia Schilt will not be returning his middle school Spanish teacher. Um, Becca Sawyer as a Pond Cove special ed teacher. Uh, Jamie Gillette, high school English. And Ellie Warren, uh, uh, Pond Cove Elementary School. Um, and I, I think most of these are, are for reasons that um, someone's staying in Spain to, to continue to teach there and uh, family issues and relocating to different parts of the country. So, um, but those are the resignations that we have up this, as of this point. I'd like to also give you an update on a future direction plan, or at least a, a portion of it. On April 29th, May 5th, and May 7th, we will be conducting walkthroughs um, in each of our buildings, the high school on the 29th, 
the middle school on the 5th in Pankova on May 7th. And this is, came as a result of our um, relationship as part of a consortium. Um, and Marie and I and um, Sarah Simmons visited a school in Pennsylvania and participated in this event. Um, and I have commitments from some other school districts that are going to send a team down to be part of the walkthrough. We'll use some of our own people, um, Yarmouth, um, Falmouth, and Wells. Uh, school <coughs> districts will all uh, be sending teams on each of those days um, to participate in the walkthroughs in, in the different schools. And it's a way to get more data and feedback um, for us to use as we, as we plan for the, our future direction plan um, beginning in the fall. So um, with that being said, we would also like, um, we would be welcome any participation by school board members to be a member of any one of those dates that you have available. It's an all day event um, where you, we would spend time um, talking to students and bringing students out in the hallway, asking them specific questions about um, the individual school. Um, at each school, they've developed some questions they would like asked. Um, we also have some questions that we would like some answers to regarding our district uh, direction, mission, and vision um, to kind of give us some feedback and just from a student perspective how we're doing. Um, we also are going to take this time, since we have these individuals here, to also ask some questions of staff members. I think it will help give us um, some good feedback and data on regarding our future direction plan, but also schools have, the individual schools have questions um, that they would like answered about the initiatives that they have going on in their, in their, in their schools. Um, so if you are available any of those days, we'd um, be happy to have more members of the team. Um, update on the Education Foundation. As, as you may know, um, the fall grants have been submitted. Um, the grants committee of the Education Foundation will be reviewing all the application and they had requests that totaled $43,000 of which they have about $12,000 to fund. Um, but it's just great to see that the staff is taking advantage of this and submitting applications for grants. As you know, the last grant cycle, um, the foundation funded approximately $15,000. And uh, their hope is to continue this cycle each year. And once they uh, reach their goal of, of maintaining some sort of an endowment, then this job will be much easier rather than, than continuing to need to raise money to do this. Um, they have um, hired a uh, consultant to help them organize a capital campaign which will begin in the fall and that will be the major initiative in moving towards uh, creating that endowment that their goal is a million dollars. And lastly, um, as you know, we did have two trips planned for this April vacation. Um, the parents, the, the Jeff Shedd and uh, the advisors to the group groups met recently. Um, there was some concern because one trip to Greece, Greece and Italy, and another trip to Spain with the uh, current conditions of what's going on in the world and traveling in that direction um, wasn't something that the, many of the parents, and I'm not saying all, but enough of the parents and students were concerned about that the trip um, has been canceled. Um, students were able to use, get vouchers, I think, for travel to someplace else at some later point in time. But it was, it was their decision um, to make that move. There were some that still wanted to, to go but not enough to, to, to warrant, warrant a trip. And that's it. OK, thank you. We can move on to the principal's reports. And Jeff, you're first on the list. Just to quickly tick off a few things. First of all, on the foreign trips, what's happening is the Italy and Greece trip should be happening next year, same time. Um, and but there are a small group of seniors who would not be re having the trip next year because they would be in college at that time. Uh, so there's actually a small group that is going to Mexico, um, and they've decided that's a, that's a good substitute for them. So that's from the Italy and Greece trip. The 
Spanish trip was, is more problematic because the Spanish trip was directly tied to the curriculum that the kids study in Spanish four and five. Um, so that trip uh, we're hoping is going to is, is right now is scheduled to happen in November during the Thanksgiving break. And will actually redu result in fewer missed days of school, which is a good thing. It also presents issues with seniors um, and Mrs. Medina and Mrs. Shapani are attempting to work out having new students come in to join the trip from whom they can purchase the, uh, the arrangements that the current seniors had made. So those are the, they're two different agencies and they handle their processes differently and one trip was curriculum related and one was not. So it's, it's being done a little bit differently for each, but that's what's happening. Um, for the second year in a row, one of the economics classes this year uh, sponsored a fundraiser uh, for Camp Sunshine. It was uh, it was a, um, a dinner at a at a nice restaurant in Portland. Um, I believe Governor Baldacci spoke at this, um, and they raised over twenty five hundred dollars uh, to go to Camp Sunshine, which will pay for several students to have a wonderful summer experience this summer. Um, uh, Tom mentioned that Jamie Gillette has submitted her resignation. She is also gone from the school right now uh, because um, she is quite pregnant and is expecting a child shortly, uh, which will be a wonderful experience for her. We're happy to have Karen Lamb join us uh, for the remainder of the school year. So Karen is on board with us. Uh, I want to mention Whitney Turkanis, um, who yesterday evening was honored along with five other students across the state of Maine by Channel 6 in their Teens Who Care program. Uh, Whitney has been very active in multiple volunteer activities around the school and out of the school, and it's a wonderful, wonderful recognition and well-deserved rec uh, recognition for Whitney Turkanis. Um, Evan Michaels uh, was scheduled to have gone this past uh, Saturday to Bangor with Mr. Tinkham for the Maine Principals Association banquet. Um, uh, I selected Evan as the recipient of the Maine Principals Association award this year. Um, he's an outstanding student, active in a number of activities. I say he was scheduled to go, but there was a, there was a fairly significant snowstorm. Um, and so um, he wasn't able to go, but he will get his plaque and his pin. We have assured him. Um, and so. That's, that's quite an honor that I think was worth mentioning. And lastly, I had a very, very, very excited Latin teacher in my office this morning uh, because about five weeks ago, the students in his Latin I classes took the national Latin exam, um, and he was quite impressed with the results that the kids had earned. Um, 32 out of the 36 students in Latin I scored above average compared to a national norm. Um, eight received gold awards, the summa cum laude awards. Um, several of those got every single question on the exam right. Um, and 16 received silver awards or maxima cum laude award recognition. Uh, it's an outstanding uh, accomplishment for a first year program. And Mr. Soule says it's all due to the kids, which is no doubt the case. So that's my report if anybody has any questions. Jeff, Mexico. I'm sorry? Mexico. Mexico. Uh, the students are going there. Is that with the school? There is one of the teachers who was going to be chaperoning is going um, with them. Uh, Jake, uh, Jake Jackson is going to be going. The same, same time period, though. So it's all during the April vacation. They're not missing any school days as a, for the trip. OK. OK. Thank you. That's really exciting news about our first year Latin students. Move on to the middle school, Nancy. <coughs> Good evening. Oh, good. I always like to move this because it's right in front of that sign. Do not touch this microphone. Um, just continually proving I'm a great match with middle school students. You know, read the directions after you've already done it. Um, <coughs> one of the things um, that Elise and Elise spoke to you about is our play, which was last weekend. And um, it was a marvelous event. Last year, I know I shared with you. Um, having the wonderful ideas of the wonder I, of the wonder years, which Ann Belden had, and the idea of getting parent volunteers to help cover Steve Price's classes during the play season, which Hector Terraza had. This year, when it came time for the play, we were sort of stumped. We didn't have that Peter Pan, that Wizard of Oz, the Music Man. So Hilary Egan, Susan Yokobaskas, and Steve Price wrote a play, and uh, called the Middle School Musical, and it was quite it was different for us, but. As the excitement built from Friday night through to Monday morning's performance, as 
the young ladies told you, it was just a fantastic experience and they had a great time doing it. Um, the students were really quite surprised by a lot of their peers and what they did. And I will tell you, our current fifth grade, we have a lot of future drama specialists there. Um, they had a great um, presentation and presence throughout the play as well as all of the performers um, did. And for those of you, some of you I know were at almost as many performances as I was at, so, and some of you got to see one of them, but it was a great experience. And if we could just capture that energy that they have during that play, we'd be set for a lifetime and we'd get a lot done in our lives because they were excited and just continually did well. Each year, the musical or the event that we do for drama, which usually is a musical, just brings to my mind that's middle school education at its best. Students stepping out, trying something maybe they've never tried before or maybe that they're really good at, doing their best work and having a wonderful time doing it. And then by Monday afternoon, all you hear in our hallways are all those songs. Everybody's trying them. So it was a great experience. They thank those adults and many other adults um, who helped out. We have a great fleet of parent volunteers who help us with that, as well as other teachers who work on it. Recently, I went to Providence, Rhode Island to, do, to the New England League of Middle Schools conference, along with five colleagues from the middle school. And it was a great conference, as Andrew Lomack McNear said. Um, he was one of the people who attended. It's not that we heard a lot of brand new things, but we heard some affirmations of things that we're doing, a little bit different tweaks on some of the things that we're doing, and also had a great time to spend with colleagues. One, I think it was the Tuesday morning I was there, we went in and we were talking about different events in middle schools, and somebody brought up one of our favorite topics, dress codes. Um, and a principal from Connecticut got up and said, well, I don't know, what do you think? Here's our dress code. And he told us what his dress code was. And it was exactly the same thing that our dress code is. So I thought he was a brilliant man and um, decided that we were on the right track with that. This is the time of year where we just like to remind the young ladies and gentlemen that um, just to dress properly for school. And remember, we are a school, not a beach. And uh, we would appreciate the parents' help and the students' help with that. Uh, we know they always like to test the line with us, so we'll get a chance to repeat that speech several times. Uh, one of our students, Tommy Haugie, who's a seventh grader, is in Washington, D.C. He's an Eisenhower student, and he's, they're doing a whole group of work um, around um, government and um, different kinds of things, touring monuments and doing that as well, but lots of different things. And when he gets back, he'll have many exciting things to share with his seventh grade colleagues, um, and hopefully with all of us, too. So we congratulate him for that. I believe he's the only young man going from Maine so that was quite an honor for him. And oh, I know the other thing, um, we had a, at our parents' association meeting today, they talked again about the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation Spelling Bee, which I myself will not be participating in because when I was in sixth grade, I made a public promise to myself I would never humiliate myself again um, in that way. In fact, I learned a lot from my colleagues who figured out how you go out on round one and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, however, uh, it's become an intriguing thing in the middle school because the spelling bee is about having fun. It's about working as teams. Middle school people, we like team things. And so far in my recruitment for a team, it's my job to recruit a team. The Parents Association is going to sponsor three people. We're getting really excited that you can dress up and wear outfits. So I just want to publicly state before the B comes that in middle school, we will consider it an accomplishment if our team has a great outfit and if we look nice, it won't matter if we go down first, but we're going to have a good time with it. So we're looking forward to that. Um, you'll see me, I'll be in the cheering section. I won't be on the team, but that's the way things are going in the middle school right now. Any questions? Okay, thank, thank you. you, Nancy. Move on to Tom. I guess I should say out, outfit. Oh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you probably realize from the weather, we're in between seasons right now, so I thought I'd take a moment to catch you up on a few things that have been happening in the district and at Pond Cove. March 24th was the district in-service day. Uh, we have been using those to work with Sarah Simmons to get um, organized around curriculum instruction and assessment. And at Pond Cove, it means a lot of this work falls on the shoulders of the grade level teams. And I uh, just want to report that each team has responded admirably to this charge. They understood the directions and the task. And although they, although they sorted it out differently, they still had to respond across all the subject matters in an organized way. And, and I think they did a fine job. 
their task was helped in this because over the years we we built up a solid curriculum which matches up to learning results even we did, even before we had learning results everyday math and FOSS and our continuing commitment to standards and reading and writing have really helped them get through that I think we're ready now at least I hear from Pankov is to move forward and make all this work real in the classroom and one of the ways they do it uh, for the past week or so Pankov teachers have been really diligently preparing for parent-teacher conferences. So the work they've done through the curriculum and our standards and individual, uh, interviewing individual children gets transferred to very personalized uh, conferences with parents. So it's one of the better parts about the learning results. We also used conference time at Pond Cove to follow up on our investigation of what and how to do with looping, whether we're going to continue it or not. Team leaders uh, acting on the recommendations of the faculty as a whole realized that we needed to hear from parents once again about their attitudes toward looping. So we used the parent conference time because we, I think we have about 100% participati participation in conferences to give parents a very short survey to fill out about their support of looping and theoretically at least we get them all back. We, we do have a lot back. And um, finally, just to know that we do uh, track changes that you've helped us make uh, through your philosophical and budget support over the years, I just wanted to remind you that uh, years ago we had an ad hoc problem solving team called a teacher assistance team. And when we came to you years ago to say we think this group would be strengthened if we had more support, uh, that is an instructional support teacher, we were able to do that. And then later on, we added uh, reading support, which is a recommendation of the teacher assistance team. We've also, through the years, been able to consult directly and efficiently with the special education team, uh, the pupil services team. And although I can't offer you ironclad proof about the effects of this, we, at least in one area, when we first started this, we noticed that there were students in grades three and four having difficulty reading, particularly in comprehension. And we probably had, uh, in grades three and four, a total of 30 kids that we were helping with individual small group support. Three years later, we only have a handful of kids in grades three and four who need that support. And uh, just so you know, we had made the agreement in the beginning that we would add those resources or target them to where they were needed. So they've been focused downward towards grades two and one in kindergarten. So I thank you for the support. And the data is there that it's actually working. Questions? No questions. Thank you, Tom. All right. Tom, I'm coming for a mental health visit tomorrow. All right. OK, we'll be around. Right. We're doing food play tomorrow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of the, out of the oh, deliver what? Right. That's, okay. yeah, that's good. That's good. I can do that. Play with food. Yeah. OK, and now we can move on to the committee reports. Um, first, the finance subcommittee, Elaine. Uh, yes, uh, the finance subcommittee met briefly prior to this evening's meeting. Um, it was brief, but it had a lot of good news, <laughs> um, being that Pauline um, did share with us much of what we already knew, but with the fact that the cushion had been awarded to Cape Elizabeth, and we did receive uh, more in that cushion, which brought our state reserve revenue allocation to uh, $1,777,360. Um, while that is good news, um, it really still is a 13% decrease in what we received over last year. Um, our expenditure remains the same, and the new net two tax figure would now become 2.3%. Three six percent. We also signed some warrants, and um, that's about it. Okay. Thank you, Elaine. Um, the policy subcommittee, Susan. Policy subcommittee met last Wednesday and um, finally or finalized prepared uh, drafts for tonight's first reading that we'll be doing under new business. Okay. Um, Unfinished business. The first thing on our list is a proposed trip by the speech and debate team to the national competition in Gretchen McNulty's class, social studies. 
Are you going to speak to that, Jeff? Um, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, this sure. came this came before the board at the at the your last last month's meeting. So this is a this is the, the second time this has appeared, and they did qualify for the national um, forensic league speech and date debate. It's not really related to the class. It's not the class. It's an extracurricular. The kids who right. And there is a main contingent that's going, and they'll be going there with the main contingent. And I think there are three chaperones, as you can see from there. Okay. So does that mean that we need to take a vote yes, on this? Yes, We will allow them to do it. Um, do we have a motion? I move sure. that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. I move that we approve the trip to the May, uh, <coughs> National <coughs> Forensic League speech and debate tournament for the students who have qualified. Okay. In a second, Jennifer. Um, any comments or discussion? I just have a, a question. Um, have we made any type of progress as to some of the guidelines on these trips uh, as far as student behavior and, and number of chaperones and that type of thing? Not to have them. Um, as you know, we did create some for a, a specific trip, but it is a goal to, to have that across the board. I know that was brought up last week, but it isn't something we have yet in place for all. Mm -hmm. so, not, in a, not in a formal sense. Is that how we would expect it to come to us as a formal procedure? And then? I think we would share that. I, it, it wouldn't be a policy. I think we would share it with you, but it wouldn't be something that the board would adopt in any way. But I think Elaine's looking for a, an application or something that's standard for all of these trips, correct? No, I, I, no, no. Um, the application I think we've seen before, which it lists the mode of transportation and the number mm -hmm. of people. Um, I guess I'm questioning where we were in regards to um, expectations of student behavior while they're on these trips um, so that we can alleviate some of the problems that we've had in the past. Um, I, I've met before the trips that have happened recently, I mean, since, since the fall, I've met with the, the Indian 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 It just seems to me, as we start to approve more of, the, more of these trips, that um, I just want to make sure that people are clear that um, it, these will be supervised in a different way and the expectations of the students would be standard. And of the chaperones, I think, too. Yeah. Maybe yeah. give the chaperones some guidelines also. It seemed, I mean, it seemed as though, I think it wasn't a Ted Jordan's second trip that kind of had those guidelines. It seemed as though everyone mm -hmm. kind of took a liking to those if, it, I mean, it would, perhaps they're already done and, and um, it would just be nice for us to know that, that there, there's some uniformity in terms of the expectations as Elaine says. I mean, I can certainly for the next board meeting. Great. Thank you. It makes it easier for me to, to feel good about sending people all over the world. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? Um, seven, zero. Next is consideration of our proposed school calendar for 2003-2004. Well, you have in front of you a school calendar that, that it, I'm recommending to the board. I don't know, we've had more input and more versions of this and debated the Labor Day issue over and over. Um, and just come to the agreement that there is no possible way we're going to make everyone happy on this issue. But in light of the fact that Labor Day does fall on September 1st, it can never be any earlier. Next year it goes to the 6th and we will be forced then to go back into the mode of we, we just would have to start the students prior to Labor Day. This calendar, if we start the students after Labor Day, we still have our last day of school at June 11th, which is earlier even than this year. The only thing we would do is to, to assure parents that this is a one-time issue. 
that because Labor Day falls where it falls, that we are able to start the students after Labor Day. Um, our teachers would, would start on <coughs> Tuesday, the 26th of August, work Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and then they would have off Friday, the four-day weekend. But I'm sure many of those teachers will probably be in Friday finishing up those bulletin boards and all. Anyway, um, but I, I, I think it's a, the feedback we received from parents um, was mixed um, and from staff at Pond Cove. The desire was to start the students after Labor Day. The middle school was about half and half and the high school would just as soon start before Labor Day because most of the schools are back. And most of the kids are back for um, athletic practices and other extracurricular events. So as you can see, there really wasn't any consensus, but this is an opportunity for those parents who do um, like to use, have a Labor Day vacation period to do that um, this time. Um, we did ask them, the parents, how they felt about a split start. If you remember, I spoke at the last meeting and it was a split answer. Um, <laughs> mainly the, the concern was from, from the middle school, high school, um, because there are a number of parents who have that combination of um, eighth grade, 10th grade, 7th grade, 11th grade, whatever. And their feeling was that, you know, if, we, if we'd rather have both of our children on the same schedule, because if we did want to take a vacation, but we have one in the high school and one in the middle school, we can't do that. Um, so that was a real, a real mix also. So taking all that information, putting it together, um, it's up to the school board, but my recommendation is this, this is an opportunity and let's take advantage of this and as long as we tell people that it's a one-time situation, um, I don't think, I think it'll still be, a, the calendar still looks very good for next year. So, so we are saying that school will start for all three schools on September 2nd? Right. Okay, and that we have teacher workshop days on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 26th, 27th, and 28th. Um, Tom, the 29th ought to have a line through it it's on this fun. calendar because yes. it looks as if right. it's the yeah. first day of school. Yep. There's no school that day. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, do we have a motion to accept this school calendar as the superintendent proposes it? Susan? I move that we accept the proposed 2003-2004 school calendar. A second? Second. Second. Kathy? Um, any other comments or questions? I, I had um, a question and a comment. <laughs> the question is, is this um, the recommended calendar from the calendar committee? Calendar committee. Or was the calendar committee also? The calendar committee was 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 mixed. Um, mixed. Um, I, when the calendar committee met, we, we we left with the idea of let's getting let's get the feedback on the split start. Um, and if the feedback was positive on the split start, we kind of left that meeting that that's something we could pursue. Um, but as it turned out, um, there wasn't a consensus on that particular. So it wasn't in. And, and basically, the calendar committee, they brought the input from their schools, and it's, it's as I said, it wasn't, there wasn't any consensus as to what the, how to go. The inner workings of the calendar, the vacations and all that, works fine. The big issue is the way to start. And my comment is, although it's an anomaly for next year, in seven, in seven years, I think it will repeat itself again. So it's not a once in a life. No, it's, no, it's, it's a once in a while. Tom, I once had it. Every seven once in a decade. <laughs> but, right. so we have a question. Um, April 1st is a five hour day? It's probably, it's probably another thing my computer did without my permission. It's, I think it's a spring conference. It looks like conferences. Conferences. It is conference. conferences. That's right. The one okay, that we, we have this year on the 31st. We didn't put that on a Friday. Does anybody Tink was on that? So who, who yeah. else is on it? Because it's really only Pond Cove, right? Who has them? No, we have middle school does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's on a if you want it kind of basis, right? Yeah, but all of our fifth and sixth grade families come in and then. 
Most. Uh, most. Well, <laughs> most of them. There was one fifth grade family that didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but and that can be adjusted. Just, what you're approving are the, the the full day, the the start dates, the vacation dates. Okay, I um, just don't remember that being. Yeah, we can if, if that. I don't know. This year was it on a, was it on a Friday? No, it was on a Wednesday. It was on. Oh, Wednesday. I think we. My, my recollection is we try to keep it away from a Friday so I, people I don't take off. Piece, yeah, we did. I think from the group, they tried to keep it away from a Friday because then we had families didn't come for conferences then either because they took long weekends, and part of the idea is to get as many of those conferences in in the afternoon as you possibly can. So for the last several years, we've gone with either Wednesdays or Thursdays. Yes. Otherwise, people will just not right. go to conferences. Yeah. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. All those in favor? Seven, zero. The third item is the consideration of the the proposed 2003-2004 school budget. Uh, yes, I, I'd like to make a motion um, that the school board accept uh, the uh, proposed 2003-2004 budget uh, of 15,328,320 dollars with a net to tax increase of 2.36. Okay, a second. Kathy, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Um, we'll move on to new business. Um, the first thing on our list is the consideration of the superintendent's recommendations to athlete, athletic fee positions. Kevin? Yeah, I have a problem with one of the uh, nominations. And I'd like to separate that out and deal with it first. Okay. Okay. Kerry Curtis has been nominated to coach eighth grade softball. And that nomination was made in writing on March 31st, 2003. Subsequently, on April 4th, he indicated his plan to resign from coaching should we not make a certain decision in another matter. And since that matter has not been heard yet, I have no idea how that's going to turn out. Accordingly, I'd like to table this particular nomination until we have clarified whether or not it is Coach Curtis's intention to walk away from the softball team as well as his 12-year investment in the swimming team. It would be unfair to that team to appoint a coach who has publicly stated their, uh, their intention of quitting should we not act in a certain fashion. Therefore, I move to table this nomination okay. until the coaches, um, we can clarify the coaches' feelings on this. Okay, does anyone else have a comment about this? Jennifer? Well, I, I'm guessing this doesn't, Eighth grade softball start next week. Monday. <laughs> yesterday. Uh, or yesterday. <laughs> actually, it started yesterday, okay. but due to some weather-related issues, um, I think today was the first time they had a meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I, and, but I do not know if Coach Curtis was there or not. The, the eighth grade, as you can see, they're sort of dividing that all up, and right. um, I don't have, so I'm not sure which mm -hmm. of the coaches worked with them today. Okay. Um, I mean. Okay, so I guess the question is, I don't mean to cut you okay. off, the, the question is, is there a second to Kevin's motion? I second it. I think it's a good idea. Okay. Um, conversation, discussion? Jennifer, you can go back to what you were saying. Oh, um, I, I guess just knowing Terry Curtis, I don't, I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I would be surprised if he would leave the team high and dry in the middle of the year or the middle of the season. That would surprise me. Um, and it would seem to me that he would give notice or whatever appropriately and then we'd have time to find another coach. 
or is it the other way to go to um, do as Kevin did, pull it aside, and then Tom, between meetings, has the, um, certainly over the summer, we grant him permission to, you know, to hire people and, and kind of delay our recommendation. Would that be more appropriate as kind of an interim process? I would prefer if we would well, that's an that way that, that our athletic director have that conversation with uh, Carrie Curtis and then have the it come back to us through our superintendent uh, either way. But it would be May. It would be May. But, yeah, but you, we have the, um, we can give you, I think through process, we can give you the ability to hire Coach. Yeah. In, in, until we meet again. Okay. Like, and it can be a retroactive approval, is what I'm trying to say. I, I know what happens over the summer. I think we can do that. I'm not sure. Is there anything? Yeah, I just have a comment. I, I don't want to discount um, the, the items or the, uh, the discussion that we're having, um, but I would not support this, this motion. I, I really believe that um, what's uh, said there versus what um, the superintendent now knows and what the principal now knows is that this coach is committed to the team and my sense is that um, that we should uh, entertain these all together again I, I respect the comments that people are making but I don't know that it um, I don't know that it's necessary to um, you know to, to, to make this um, a separate issue and I so I would not vote in favor of that Anyone else want to come in on this? Okay, well, we have a second to Kevin's motion. Um, so I think we need to take a vote. All those in favor of the Kevin's motion? To the table. All those opposed? <coughs> Two before. Sorry. So let, let me move this along. May I make a motion? Yes. I'd make a motion that we accept the uh, superintendent's uh, recommendations for this spring. Um, uh, is it athletic? Uh, is it all athletic? Or? Yeah. Okay. Um, athletic uh, fee nominations. Okay. And a second. Jennifer. All those in favor? All those opposed? Okay. Um, we can now move on to consideration of policies for first reading. Susan. Um, okay. I probably, uh, if we can just go right through these. <coughs> I think I'll go through them the way they came in my package and hope that that's the order they are and everyone else's. Um, first one is class size. Mm -hmm. Um, been pulled out. <laughs> <laughs> Is that? Yeah, uh, do people not have it in that order? No, I have. No, we pulled them out. <laughs> so we okay. Have, yes. Okay. Okay. Comment. I think we wanted to have a discussion regarding the class size and the and the range that was recommended by the policy committee. Okay. Uh, on that, um, the feeling being that that I felt that the range while serving a specific purpose, uh, particularly didn't, I didn't quite agree with it. I felt that we should stick with a single number on that and use that as the trigger and utilize some of our original numbers and then uh, readdress the teacher load at the 7th to 12th grade, 12th grade in this policy. So um, the language in the policy is okay. What you're saying is under recommended range. Mm -hmm. um, leave the, the numbers to the right, which was, I, I think, the original number right, that right. triggered investigation. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. It needs to change, change from range right. to size. Yeah. Okay. To size. All right. And, and I agree with Elaine that the, um, the larger end of the range is, as we have discussed for, you know, the past few years, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think this range is too wide. That, that we would be better served to go with 18 for kindergarten, 20 for first and second grade, and 3 through 12, 22. Okay. 
I, I would I would agree. I, I think I'm sure there was some good uh, discussion that I didn't get to participate in, but my expectation was that we were really going to more address the um, the teacher loads for seven through twelve, and I, I didn't really have a sense that there was a need for a change in the other in the other piece of the policy. Okay, and then are we satisfied with the the way it addresses the teacher load, student load? Okay, Jay. And there was really. A, there was really nothing changed in the language up the top, was there, or? Not in the top. No. Okay. No. It I, was, I didn't think it so. It basically just added a teacher load thing. Yeah. Well, that, but that's, I, I meant right. um, above the number, no. the numbers no. that we're looking at. So, that, yeah, the, the, the bottom part is new. Okay. Well, just that one paragraph, isn't it? I, I think we changed both, par uh, the one, the introductory paragraph includes um, right. class size, I mean. But only in reference to load. I think those are the only changes, right? I, I uh, otherwise restated the philosophy. I, I'm not sure I'd have to look at the old policy right now, but there, I know we did pretty much review both of those paragraphs. Mm -hmm. Probably before it, uh, become, before it comes before us for the second reading, if, if maybe we could just have a sense whether or not our attention should be drawn to anything there that has changed. I mean, it looks fine, but I can't remember what it was. I was happy with what was there before. If it's if it's been approved and not, you know, substantively changed, then then I certainly would support it. If we could just see what it is that might have changed. Would it um, would it be better to give it to you in italics here, or would you like a copy of the old one so you can compare it? If what would be the well, you better? Know how sometimes yeah. we get them with with the highlights, Mary, Mary just put out. The highlights on it or whatever. Okay. Do you have a copy of that, Mary? Mm -hmm. so you, okay. Okay. Everybody. That's that's and we can just. I mean, I don't need it even before the next. The next meeting, I, I, just can, I just want to be able to see what it is that's changed if something's changed. Okay, so if you have that for second reading, hopefully there won't be significant. Will that be okay for a process? Okay. okay. There were just some typos in there too. Typos in this. Okay. okay. Do you want to um, give those to us after, Elaine? Do you have Do you have your copy marked up? Mark them up. Yeah. There. That'd be helpful. I think I found them. Oh, Mary found them. Okay. I bet you found them already. Um, the next one is graduation requirements. And I think the changes here are pretty clear in that it addressed the additional year of science to meet the learning results. Um, I, I think this one looks fine. Yeah. I don't have a... Okay. This looks, uh, excuse me, um, okay. this looks fine, and I'm sure this was in here before, but it speaks to ranking top 10, ten students in designation of valedictorian, and I question what that has to do with graduation requirements. I'm sure. Well, I'm recognizing that, so, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the only change is in bold. Is that the only place that those things are addressed? Yeah. Not that, yeah. <laughs> right. So is it something that we would want a separate, separate policy? policy? I'm just asking the question. I just, I don't yeah. see what it has to do with graduation requirements. Okay. So can we strike it out? We'll it's probably it got to be in there policy? somewhere. We've got to have something on that. I suspect it's not anywhere. I, I suspect that it's not anywhere else and it's just found itself there. Um, All right. So we'll have the policy committee do the research and put it on the agenda for our next meeting. I think, just make it, and I think we need to see is there a more appropriate place for it. Right. right. Okay. All right. So we'll look into that. It's feasible that we could separate it and just put in a new title. You know, that might be an alternative. You have graduation requirements and then graduation recognitions. Yeah, you know, it might be just a separate. Okay. Something like that. All right. Well, we'll how about if we discuss it at committee mm -hmm. level and make a recommendation? Okay. Um, non discrimination, non discriminating equal opportunity and affirmative action. The only thing that, um, that I noticed here is that um, in the menu, 
of um, reasons that people can be harassed or discriminated against. Um, in the first list, sexual orientation, appearance, family and or marital status <coughs> is, is listed and it's not in the second and I think we need to make that consistent throughout these documents. So um, that appears in a couple of other of the documents and so if it's okay, I think we'll go through and make sure that everywhere we list those that they're consistent. Mm -hmm. I okay. would, did you just misspeak though? I think you said the reasons people can be harassed. Oh, cannot be. <laughs> Thank you. So, right. Well, that would be the possible, yeah, right. the possible situations. Susan, okay. is this a new? Is this new for us? These are all part of the the policies that follow are all policies that will be part of the um, mandated behavior code. So there were recommended policies through uh, Maine School Management and our and Drummond and Woodson that these particular policies that we're going through now um, will be a, re a required part of the behavior code. They're all referenced in the code itself. And some of them we have, some we did not have. Drummond and Woodson went through all of our policies um, to make sure we were in compliance with the mandated behavior code. S some needed revision, some we needed completely new policies for. Tom, I suspect, I'm sorry, Marie, I suspect I'm thinking along the same lines as George. These things look pretty familiar to me. Well, we have an affirmative and action. Exactly. And if we're replacing one affirmative action policy with another, I think we need an action to dump the original policy, don't we? Well, not, well yeah, if, if, we're actually, if we're actually deleting a policy, but if, this, if we already have this policy, it's a revision. So if we have a policy ACAA-R, which is the regulation. Um, I guess my confusion comes up because there's no indication that this is a revision. And I was looking at it saying, how could this possibly be new? We do have this policy. This, is a, this one is a revision. Yeah. It should say And th this is not the only one that I think. Because if you look at the whole... At the end, it should have a, a place where it says adopted and revised. But it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't. So there could be no... It, 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 just, it just suggests that it's, it's brand new. And I, as, like Kevin says, I know that it's, a, it's addressed somewhere. We do have a policy AC at, the, at this time, but this was... Uh, this it was completely redone. It's not just... I probably right. should have put the adopted date of the original policy and then put this as a revision oh, okay, and yeah. I'll make okay. that change. Yeah. Because we do currently have an AC policy. And the other thing the policy committee suggested that because of the nature of these policies and the importance that's been placed on it, that our plan was to bring these back three times. Just because we know there will be uh, some discussion just as we did with when we did all the athletic policies, I think we brought those back for a third time. My, because our assumption is there will be a lot of discussion. Um, the kinds of things that are coming up now, because there's so many of them, rather than just bring them back for a second reading, we'll bring them back for, bring them back for a third reading. Mm -hmm. we are, my we are, concern was that, did we have a policy right. here that we're adopting tonight, and we'll be leaving in place another policy that said something similar, but not quite the same. Well, yeah, and, and we did go through all of that, and I'm sure we, you know, it, it was um, quite a task to go through all of this, but um, that would be good information as we labeled these and maybe create some sort of a chart that this policy, ACC, replacement, revision, is there something that needs to be deleted? So that's probably something the policy committee could do. And actually, in the plan that I had distributed, and I know it's been a few months maybe, but w nothing was added to it. We'd been working on this chunk of policies. There was the, and the first page was kind of what we were hoping to do for the year. The second page was kind of an addendum of these specific code of conduct policies. And I tried to align the policy that they were telling us we had with what we currently had or whether we had any at all. So that was kind of a graph um, way to show people what the gaps were between what we needed and what we currently had in place. Um, but it sounds like what people are saying is what's more helpful is if we actually physically get a copy of the closest thing. For example, I think this 
uh, in this, we uncoupled supervision and then expulsion. We had had them together. I think one of the things we did was kind of break those apart. Now, we, we were advised that was the thing to do. So it's, uh, under those circumstances, we should probably give you copies of what we had as closely as we can align it, where you can say, this, oh, this is the closest thing we had, and here's the language. Would that be helpful? Yeah, I think so. Yes. OK, in board packets for the next reading, is that OK, or do you want a separate package in the interim? No. OK. Well, right. it wouldn't, would it not make sense to code it at the bottom as well, to we'll say to that, that the yeah, for old historical policy? purposes as well, mm -hmm. I right. think, for some future board trying to figure out what the heck we did. Yeah. yeah. For example, on this particular one, this board was, I think, proactive and future-focused several years ago um, in terms of equal rights, and we made a revision to our non-discrimination uh, statement and included sexual orientation at that time. Now right. it's it's probably yeah. maybe it's standard fare, but mm -mm. it's it's so you modified their standard to add okay. Mm -hmm. okay. We and that was some of the process. We 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 took what they gave us, and uh, and some circumstances. And this is one we didn't want to take a step back. Right. Okay. So we went back and kind of went with a more inclusive, inviting environment. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. I appreciate the work. It's just, it's just, there. Like Kevin knows. I mean, we we've passed, we've gone through some of these before, and I'm like, wait a minute. I know that there has to be something like in here already. So it's really just, if we can see like, the, and not not a big deal. It's just you know, throw the old stuff in there, and you can just say, this is going, and this is taking its mm -hmm. place, and that'll that'll be fine. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, the next page: harassment and sexual harassment of students. The same thing added the um, the more broad. Um, uh, criteria, sexual orientation, appearance, family and or marital status. Um, so I think we'll add that to be consistent. Any other comments on that? Okay. Student discrimination and harassment complaint procedure. My only question is, is this actually an administrative guideline versus a policy? Would you, the AA, it should AC, be a guideline. A C A A dash R. Yeah. R means that it's a it's procedures rather than yeah. what has That's to happen. That's what the R indicates. The next step in this process is the once the student of the code of conduct is, is adopted with all the policies, then each of the schools will have to look through their handbooks to make sure they coincide with all these policies. Any other questions or comments on that? Okay. Hazing? That's another one. I mean, I know that. We had something in place. <laughs> yeah. OK. OK, so uh, until we get you what we had right now, we'll go ahead and move forward. Um, school system commitment to standards for ethical and responsible behavior. This was given to us. They basically said, this, you, you, you have to include Required. this. Tobacco use in possession. This is one that we did have. I we think did. verbatim. Okay. We did or didn't? We did. We did. Oh, okay. I, um, I think maybe word for word. I'm not sure. But we'll get that. Um, bomb threats. This is one that is required by law. Um, and we did not have one. Right. Any comments on that? Okay, good. good. Okay. Good, good. System wide student code of, code of conduct. This is the overall policy, and as you can see in Article 1, the um, standards were the ones that, when we, that came out of the, the work, the public forum we had, and the meetings with. Um, with parents, and the rest of this, in each one of these articles, um, the other policies are referenced. Mm -hmm. This is kind of the overview. Um, ag again, under discrimination, D, um, the same language needs to be added, the sexual orientation appearance, and we'll do that. Anything else in this? Okay. 
uh, drug and alcohol use by students. I guess my only concern on this is that since this does not uh, mention the guillotine or firing squad or anything like that, that it puts Jeff on the hook for meeting out individual disciplines, and is that a good idea? I mean, we don't, we don't really speak to uh, what, the, uh, what can happen. And I'm just concerned that the jailhouse lawyers will chop that to pieces. You want uh, on the other hand, I, I believe the principal has should be granted right. latitude as well. But I, I'm just concerned that, as, as the way this is written, does that well, if, open us up to more problems? If you look at, if you look at the system wide, and I know that. The disciplinary action, um, it gives you a, a, a range, which could be anywhere from suspension to a recommendation for expulsion under disciplinary action. Is that what you mean, what the consequences are specifically? Mm -hmm. So within that range, the schools would create in their, their handbooks First offense, second offense, whatever those are, as long as they're within these. Yeah, I'm thinking specifically, for example, the athletic contract contains very specific language. This happens, this is the result. This happens, this is the result. We may not all like it, but it's consistent. And I'm just concerned, do we put the principal or whoever is implementing this policy, do we hold them up to accusations of inconsistency? Those consequences, though, the very specific ones, would be in the, the student handbook. You'd rather see them in here? Not necessarily. No. So, the, so the policy gives, gives the general kind of overview and the, um, and the handbook. I'm doing this the easy way. I'm raising the issue. So I don't have no, I understand what you're saying, because we did do that, and the athletic, the athletic policy is very uh, specific. This is, this is in the policy general and in the student handbooks the problem with that is we'd have to then meet out the consequences because they might be, for any of these, the consequences could be very different at each level. I've just become very sensitive to charges of inconsistent application no. of policy, procedure, and process. But yeah. this would vary school to school. Right. I mean, if you had this in, you know, kindergarten. Well, no, that. It would, no, but. Right. Hey, and the gardener comes with a beer in his backpack. I mean, it's a whole different and I, I think scenario. We run, yeah, not, um, no, but I mean, I'm just I'm saying, I don't think we're going to recommend we expel him. You know, it's, I, so I think that it. No, but then I think Tom had said then it would have to be different for all schools. And is that. It would that be different, what we and we want, want the policy to include all of that, including as we get through any of these uh, tobacco use, conduct, and we would then, for consistency's sake, have to meet out the individual consequences at each school and each level in each one of these areas? Or is that an issue to be covered in the individual student handbooks? With the letter um, from the lawyer that they gave us some direction around this, they said, the board should note that there is language in the handbooks that differs substantially from the board policy and that the handbooks also contain different sanctions for infractions in different places. This is also a problem with the athletic policies and the handbooks, see discussion below. That, that's the advice they gave us under the specific student drug abuse section. So they specifically are identifying your issue. And what they're saying is um, that we need to be aware that we go back and align them. And in case there's a dispute, the policy overrides. Um, handbook. Right, the handbook. But they, this is a step that needs to be taken, that they should, we should be aware. Therein lies my concern. We have somebody who picks up the policy and says, this says this, and this says this, and right. he did that. But I, I guess I don't have a problem with it because the, the handbook is more specific and the policy, it, you know, says they may suspend or, I mean, that's like the worst case scenario. And Anywhere from suspension to uh, recommendation for expulsion. Right. 
Um, and I think, I think you can be a little more general in the policy and a little more specific in the policy. Well, as long as we're lining them both together, I think at the same time, you know, I mean, is that possible to, when we pass this policy, that we make sure it's aligned in the handbooks? I, well, that'll be the next step, I think, is for the handbooks to come into compliance with the policy or into alignment with the policy. We've identified that it needs to be done, but we didn't want to do it until the policies were approved. I, I think we just have to make sure that it's followed through. It's, if it's followed through that way, I, I don't think Kevin objects to that, correct? No, Am I, I correct? I okay. just want to make sure He's just questioning that we're it. taking care right. of business and not hanging any of our people out. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So we follow it through all the way to the handbook. Right. Okay. Okay. Any other comments on drug and alcohol use by students? Student conduct on buses. This is new. Is this new? I don't think so. No. I don't think so. no, we've had something. We had something. I'm not sure how similar. Oh, so that's why I think it's a good idea that we should be on one thing. Any comments? No. And then I have drug and alcohol use by students, but we just did this, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Weapons violence and school safety. Is this again a combination? Well, this puts us in compliance um, with, uh, there's a lot of legal references here. Um, this is something that we have to have as part of, as part of our policy. Mm -hmm. We had um, one policy titled Weapons in the Schools. Um, I think that was it. So this is a little more broad. Mm -hmm. okay. This is an area that, that, as I remember this one too, this gets into the whole area of if you look at verbal and written and or written statements uh, and threats, um, computers, which we didn't cover before, which is a whole new area that we didn't have in the old policy. Any other comments? Okay. Student locker storage facilities. Any, any questions, comments? No. Okay. Um, student discipline. Questions, comments? No. Suspension of students. I think this in the old policy we did wasn't suspend we had a suspension yeah. slash expulsion. Uh, it was combined. This has been separated into two yeah. policies. Okay. Right. Student suspension and expulsion was the old one. Um, expulsion of student question? No. Expulsion of students. Okay. Now That's an it? apology for me. Can we but, go back to weapons violence and school safety for a moment? Mm -hmm. There was something here, and it took me a while to, to find it. Under Section A, possession and or use of articles commonly used, etc., 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 it says switchblades, knives. Um, can we substitute any, the, the phrase, any type of knife? This is the A. A. In my mind, a switchblade is a knife, and a knife is a knife. But if we start to enumerate that it's a switchblade knife, what about a lockback knife? What about a uh, 
a Swiss Army knife because I remember one of the big things when um, my son was in the school was, I don't have a knife, and they would immediately pull out a Swiss Army knife. Well, this isn't a knife. Yes, it is a knife. And the arguments would, so I, I just... So just say any type of just knife. Just any type of knife, period, in the conversation. Pull out, switch, pull out switch blades. Right. Yeah, Eliminate. yeah because yeah. I don't think we have to specify switch blades if we say any type of knife. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Did you, did you hit expulsions of students yet? Is, is that one that's on now? Yep. Running now. Um, the only, and here's where it would be helpful to just see the old stuff that there was uh, <coughs> issues that came up in term, and, and that the board was concerned about. That, um, and I think that there's probably some language in that old policy that we might want to revisit. It would not change anything that's here, but it would. But I think it would be, it would be in addition to what's here, because we ran into a situation where there would be a withdrawal before an expulsion hearing, and um, and uh, we had a way to deal with that. I, I, you know, we had language to deal with that. And I think that that's still a possibility, and I, I think it's still something that we want to address. I thought we talked about that, didn't we? Did. Mm, we did. Yeah. In, in the event that a student is withdrawn from enrollment prior to the expulsion hearing, a withdrawn prior to expulsion hearing notation will be entered into the student's permanent record. Does that sound like what right. we're talking about? Yes. OK. Yeah. That's from our old policy, so you right. want to make sure we don't yeah. Yeah. bring right. that in. OK. It's not in the new one. No, we the new one. They uncoupled it for us, and they they didn't like the language in ours. Who didn't like language? The um, we the ran a, we gave it to our attorneys to, for review. Did they not like the language, or did they tell us that we just couldn't have it because we made a moral decision that it needed to be in there? The, I don't think they had issue with that particularly. That, particular. yeah. that, yeah. that we had lumped the two together, and they really weren't parallel processes. They needed to be separated out. Oh yeah, and, I have right. Yeah. No. We, we did talk about, about that. that. The, I didn't realize we had pulled it out. No, we did have a long discussion about it because we knew several of us remembered it was in the old policy. Right. On this one, so I thought we had talked about that it would be in, in here. here. Yeah. All right. Just yeah, we'll go back through. This and, is the value yeah. of we experience on the board. <laughs> yeah. George and I remember that that was we wrestled with that for a long time. Well, it sounds like the policy committee. Did too, and and I have no recollection yeah, well, of that. But you know, since I'm not serving on policy any longer, I can only, as George is doing, past history on this one. But, but okay. I think it's great. You know, the the great thing is that these are all now cross reference yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's, it makes it's it's much more it's much easier. So I think it's a, I think it's great. Okay. So for um for next meeting, we'll get you copies of any original policies that we had, as well as kind of a, an update of the chart that we were trying to follow to make sure that we didn't lose any on the way. And all of these will come back for second reading right. next month. And we'll have to, and, and we'll have to make a decision, I think, with some like the old suspension expulsion, if it's been re, redone that substantially, then we would have to vote to delete that particular policy as an FE. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we do that? When do we do that? After the third reading? Yeah, at, at the third reading. Okay. Does that require more than one reading, Tom, to delete a policy? A deletion, actually, you're allowed to delete in one. Oh, okay. But I I've just wrote it as part of the package. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, and earlier, in addition to um, Sue's first readings, um, we had an executive session for um, an expulsion of a student, and we need to take um, action on that. Oh, yes. Do we have a motion? I move that we expel a student for a violation of the student code of conduct. Okay. In a second. Kathy, all those in favor? I didn't participate, oh, so I can't. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, six, zero. And the last thing on our list tonight is consideration of the superintendent's request to enter executive session um, to discuss teacher negotiations. Uh -huh. um, so I, we need a, a motion to close our public meeting. Do you have something before yeah, that? Do we need to invite Pauline? And invite Pauline, yes. Okay. Yeah. Pauline, okay. Do you want to read the dates first of upcoming meetings? Well, we need the motions first. 
Yeah. First, we need a motion to exit public session and enter executive session, correct? Okay, Kevin. So moved. Okay, second. Susan. And um, that Paul motion is includes inviting Pauline, Pauline. is that inviting correct? Inviting Pauline to our executive session. Um, all those in favor? Seven, zero. Okay, and lastly, I will just read the dates for our next meetings. Um, the Town Council Finance Committee and School Board will meet on April 28th, 7.30 here in the Council Chambers to present the proposed um, school budget. Our next school board workshop meeting will be April 29th, that's after school vacation, correct? Um, at 7 p.m. in the high school library, we will be discussing the future direction plan and curriculum. Um, the policy subcommittee will meet Wednesday, May 7th at 12 noon in the Jordan Conference Room. Um, the next town council meeting, Monday, May 12th at 7.30 in the council chambers, will be a public hearing and budget adoption. And the finance subcommittee next month, May 13th at 6.30, followed by our regular school board meeting at 7.30. Um, and our meeting is adjourned.